The History of Solidarity Polish, Solidarność, pronounced Sli Darnt, Listen, a Polish non-governmental trade union, began on August 14, 1980, at the Lenin shipyards, now Gdansk shipyards at its founding by Lech Walesa and others. In the early 1980s, it became the first independent labor union in a Soviet bloc country. Solidarity gave rise to a broad, non-violent, anti-communist social movement that, at its height, claimed some 9.4 million members. It is considered to have contributed greatly to the fall of communism. Poland's communist government attempted to destroy the Union by instituting martial law in 1981, followed by several years of political repression, but in the end was forced into negotiation. The roundtable talks between the government and the Solidarity-led opposition resulted in semi-free elections in 1989. By the end of August 1989, a Solidarity-led coalition government had been formed, and, in December 1990, Walesa was elected president. This was soon followed by the dismantling of the communist governmental system and by Poland's transformation into a modern democratic state. Solidarity's early survival represented a break in the hard-line stance of the Communist Polish United Workers' Party PZPR, and was an unprecedented event, not only for the People's Republic of Poland, a satellite of the USSR ruled by a one-party communist regime, but for the whole of the Eastern Bloc. Solidarity's example led to the spread of anti-communist ideas and movements throughout the Eastern Bloc, weakening communist governments. This process later culminated in the revolutions of 1989. In the 1990s, Solidarity's influence on Poland's political scene waned. A political arm of the Solidarity Movement, Solidarity Electoral Action was founded in 1996 and would win the Polish parliamentary elections in 1997, only to lose the subsequent 2001 elections. Thereafter, Solidarity had little influence as a political party, though it did become the largest trade union in Poland. Pre-1980 roots In the 1970s and 1980s, the initial success of Solidarity in particular, and of dissident movements in general, was fed by a deepening crisis within Soviet-influenced societies. There was declining morale, worsening economic conditions a shortage economy, and growing stress from the Cold War. After a brief boom period, from 1975 the policies of the Polish government, led by party first secretary Edward Gierek, precipitated a slide into increasing depression, as foreign debt mounted. In June 1976, the first workers' strikes took place, involving violent incidents at factories in Plock, Radom and Ursus. When these incidents were quelled by the government, the workers' movement received support from intellectual dissidents, many of them associated with the Committee for Defense of the Workers Polish, Komite Obroni Robotnikow, abbreviated CORE, formed in 1976. The following year, CORE was renamed the Committee for Social Self-Defense KSS CORE. On October 16, 1978, the Bishop of Krakow, Karol Wojtyla, was elected Pope John Paul II. A year later, during his first pilgrimage to Poland, his masses were attended by hundreds of thousands of his countrymen. The Pope called for the respecting of national and religious traditions and advocated for freedom and human rights, while denouncing violence. To many Poles, he represented a spiritual and moral force that could be set against brute material forces, he was a bellwether of change, and became an important symbol—and supporter—of changes to come. <laughs> Early strikes 1980. Strikes did not occur merely due to problems that had emerged shortly before the labor unrest, but due to governmental and economic difficulties spanning more than a decade. In July 1980, Edward Gierek's government, facing economic crisis, decided to raise prices while slowing the growth of wages. At once there ensued a wave of strikes and factory occupations, with the biggest strikes taking place in the area of Lublin. The first strike started on July 8, 1980 in the State Aviation Works in Swidnik. Although the strike movement had no coordinating center, the workers had developed an information network to spread news of their struggle. A dissident group, the Workers' Defense Committee Corps, which had originally been set up in 1976 to organize aid for victimized workers, attracted small groups of working-class militants in major industrial centers. 
At the Lenin shipyard in Gdansk, the firing of Anna Walentinovich, a popular crane operator and activist, galvanized the outraged workers into action. On August 14, the shipyard workers began their strike, organized by the Free Trade Unions of the Coast. The workers were led by electrician Lech Walesa, a former shipyard worker who had been dismissed in 1976, and who arrived at the shipyard late in the morning of August 14. The strike committee demanded the rehiring of Walentinovich and Walesa, as well as the according of respect to workers' rights and other social concerns. In addition, they called for the raising of a monument to the shipyard workers who had been killed in 1970 and for the legalization of independent trade unions. The workers may have timed the strike to coincide with the nearby Intervision Song Contest, which many international journalists attended. The Polish government enforced censorship, and official media said little about the sporadic labor disturbances in Gdansk. As a further precaution, all phone connections between the coast and the rest of Poland were soon cut. Nonetheless, the government failed to contain the information, a spreading wave of samizdats Polish, Bibula, including Robotnik the worker, and grapevine gossip, along with Radio Free Europe broadcasts that penetrated the Iron Curtain, ensured that the ideas of the emerging solidarity movement quickly spread. On August 16, delegations from other strike committees arrived at the shipyard. Delegates Bogdan Lee, Andrei Gwiazda and others together with shipyard strikers agreed to create an Inter-Enterprise Strike Committee or MKS. On August 17 a priest, Henrik Jankowski, performed a mass outside the shipyard's gate, at which 21 demands of the MKS were put forward. The list went beyond purely local matters, beginning with a demand for new, independent trade unions and going on to call for a relaxation of the censorship, a right to strike, new rights for the church, the freeing of political prisoners, and improvements in the National Health Service. Next day, a delegation of core intelligentsia, including Tadeusz Mazowiecki, arrived to offer their assistance with negotiations. A Bibula news sheet, Solidarnosc, produced on the shipyard's printing press with core assistance, reached a daily print run of 30,000 copies. Meanwhile, Jacek Kaczmarski's protest song, Murray Walls, gained popularity with the workers. On August 18, the Szczecin shipyard joined the strike, under the leadership of Marian Yurchik. A tidal wave of strikes swept the coast, closing ports and bringing the economy to a halt. With core assistance and support from many intellectuals, workers occupying factories, mines, and shipyards across Poland joined forces. Within days, over 200 factories and enterprises had joined the strike committee. By August 21, most of Poland was affected by the strikes, from coastal shipyards to the mines of the Upper Silesian Industrial Area in Upper Silesia, the city of Jesterzebie Zadroy became center of the strikes, with a separate committee organized there, see Jesterzebie Zadroy 1980 strikes. More and more new unions were formed, and joined the federation. Thanks to popular support within Poland, as well as to international support and media coverage, the Gdansk workers held out until the government gave in to their demands. On August 21 a governmental commission Erzadoa, including Mieczysław Jagielski arrived in Gdansk, and another one with Kazimierz Barsakowski was dispatched to Szczecin. On August 30 and 31, and on September 3, representatives of the workers and the government signed an agreement ratifying many of the workers' demands, including the right to strike. This agreement came to be known as the August or Gdansk Agreement other agreements were signed in Szczecin the Szczecin Agreement of August 30th, and Jesterzebi Zadroy on September 3rd. It was called the Jesterzebi Agreement and as such is regarded as part of the Gdansk Agreement. Though concerned with labor union matters, the agreement enabled citizens to introduce democratic changes within the communist political structure and was regarded as a first step toward dismantling the party's monopoly of power. The workers' main concerns were the establishment of a labor union independent of Communist Party control, and recognition of a legal right to strike. Workers' needs would now receive clear representation. Another consequence of the Gdansk Agreement was the replacement, in September 1980, of Edward Gierek by Stanislaw Kania as party first secretary. <laughs> first Solidarity 1980-1981 Encouraged by the success of the August strikes, on September 17 workers' representatives, including Lech Walesa, formed a nationwide labor union, Solidarity Nizalezni Samarzadni Zwiazek Zawadawi NSZZ, Solidarnosc, 
It was the first independent labor union in a Soviet bloc country. Its name was suggested by Karol Majilevsky, and its famous logo was conceived by Jerzy Yanishevsky, designer of many solidarity-related posters. The new union's supreme powers were vested in a legislative body, the Convention of Delegates The executive branch was the National Coordinating Commission later renamed the National Commission the union had a regional structure, comprising 38 regions region and two districts Okreg. On December 16, 1980, the monument to fallen shipyard workers was unveiled in Gdansk, and on June 28, 1981, another monument was unveiled in Poznan, which commemorated the Poznan 1956 protests. On January 15, 1981, a solidarity delegation, including Lech Walesa, met in Rome with Pope John Paul II. From September 5 to 10, and from September 26 to October 7, Solidarity's first national congress was held in Hala Olivia, Gdansk, and Lech Walesa was elected its president. Last accord of the congress was adoption of Republican program, self-governing republic. Meanwhile, Solidarity had been transforming itself from a trade union into a social movement or more specifically, a revolutionary movement. Over the 500 days following the Gdansk Agreement, 9 to 10 million workers, intellectuals and students joined it or its suborganizations, such as the Independent Student Union Nizalezny ZR Zezeny Studentau, created in September 1980, the Independent Farmers Trade Union NSZZ Rolniko Indywidualnich, Solidarnosk, or Rural Solidarity, created in May 1981 and the Independent Craftsmen's Trade Union. It was the only time in recorded history that a quarter of a country's population some 80% of the total Polish workforce had voluntarily joined a single organization. History has taught us that there is no bread without freedom. The Solidarity Program stated a year later, What we had in mind was not only bread, butter and sausages, but also justice, democracy, truth, legality, human dignity, freedom of convictions, and the repair of the republic. Tagodnik Solidarnosc, a Solidarity published newspaper, was started in April 1981. Using strikes and other protest actions, Solidarity sought to force a change in government policies. In some cases, as in Bielsko Biala, Solidarity managed to force corrupt officials of the government to lose their jobs. At the same time, it was careful never to use force or violence, so as to avoid giving the government any excuse to bring security forces into play. After 27 Bydgoszcz Solidarity members, including Jan Ruluski, were beaten up on March 19, a four-hour warning strike on March 27, involving around 12 million people, paralyzed the country. This was the largest strike in the history of the Eastern Bloc, and it forced the government to promise an investigation into the beatings. This concession, and Willess's agreement to defer further strikes, proved a setback to the movement, as the euphoria that had swept Polish society subsided. Nonetheless the Polish Communist Party—the Polish United Workers' Party PZPR—had lost its total control over society, yet while Solidarity was ready to take up negotiations with the government, the Polish Communists were unsure what to do, as they issued empty declarations and bided their time. Against the background of a deteriorating communist shortage economy and unwillingness to negotiate seriously with Solidarity, it became increasingly clear that the communist government would eventually have to suppress the Solidarity movement as the only way out of the impasse, or face a truly revolutionary situation. The atmosphere was increasingly tense, with various local chapters conducting a growing number of uncoordinated strikes as well as street protests, such as the summer 1981 hunger demonstrations in Poland, in response to the worsening economic situation. On December 3, 1981, Solidarity announced that a 24-hour strike would be held if the government were granted additional powers to suppress dissent, and that a general strike would be declared if those powers were used. Topic. Martial Law 1981 After the Gdansk Agreement, the Polish government was under increasing pressure from the Soviet Union to take action and strengthen its position. Stanislaw Kania was viewed by Moscow as too independent, and on October 18, 1981, the Party Central Committee put him in the minority. Kania lost his post as first secretary, and was replaced by Prime Minister and Minister of Defense Gen. Wojciech Jaruzelski, who adopted a strong arm policy. 
On December 13, 1981, Jaruzelski began a crackdown on Solidarity, declaring martial law and creating a military council of national salvation or WRON. Solidarity's leaders, gathered at Gdansk, were arrested and isolated in facilities guarded by the Security Service or SB, and some 5,000 Solidarity supporters were arrested in the middle of the night. Censorship was expanded, and military forces appeared on the streets. A couple of hundred strikes and occupations occurred, chiefly at the largest plants and at several Silesian coal mines, but were broken by Zomo paramilitary riot police. One of the largest demonstrations, on December 16, 1981, took place at the Vujek coal mine, where government forces opened fire on demonstrators, killing nine and seriously injuring 22. The next day, during protests at Gdansk, government forces again fired at demonstrators, killing one and injuring two. By December 28, 1981, strikes had ceased, and solidarity appeared crippled. The last strike in the 1981 Poland, which ended on December 28, took place in the Piast coal mine in the upper Silesian town of Biron. It was the longest underground strike in the history of Poland, lasting 14 days. Some 2,000 miners began it on December 14, going 650 meters underground. Out of the initial 2,000, half remained until the last day. Starving, they gave up after military authorities promised they would not be prosecuted. On October 8, 1982, Solidarity was banned. The range of support for the Solidarity was unique. No other movement in the world was supported by Ronald Reagan, Santiago Carrillo, Enrico Berlinguer, Pope John Paul II, Margaret Thatcher, Tony Benn, peace campaigners, NATO spokesmen, Christians, Western communists, conservatives, liberals, socialists. The international community outside the Iron Curtain condemned Jaruzelski's actions and declared support for solidarity. Dedicated organizations were formed for that purpose, like Polish Solidarity Campaign in Great Britain. U.S. President Ronald Reagan imposed economic sanctions on Poland, which eventually would force the Polish government into liberalizing its policies. Meanwhile, the CIA together with the Catholic Church and various Western trade unions such as the AFL-CIO provided funds, equipment and advice to the Solidarity Underground. The political alliance of Reagan and the Pope would prove important to the future of Solidarity. The Polish public also supported what was left of Solidarity. A major medium for demonstrating support of Solidarity became masses held by priests such as Jerzy Populisko. Besides the communist authorities, Solidarity was also opposed by some of the Polish emigre radical right, believing Solidarity or CORE to be disguised communist groups, dominated by Jewish Trotskyite Zionists. In July 1983, martial law was formally lifted, though many heightened controls on civil liberties and political life, as well as food rationing remained in place through the mid to late 1980s. Topic: <inaudible> Underground Solidarity 1982 to 1988. Almost immediately after the legal solidarity leadership had been arrested, underground structures began to arise. On April 12, 1982, Radio Solidarity began broadcasting. On April 22, Zbigniew Bujak, Bogdan Lee, Vladislaw Frasiniak and Vladislaw Hardik created an Interim Coordinating Commission to serve as an underground leadership for solidarity. On May 6 another underground solidarity organization, an NSSZ -S Regional Coordinating Commission Regional was created by Bogdan Borisevich, Alexander Hall, Stanislaw Yarosh, Bogdan Lee and Marian Switek. June 1982 saw the creation of a Fighting Solidarity organization. Throughout the mid-1980s, Solidarity persevered as an exclusively underground organization. Its activists were dogged by the Security Service SB, but managed to strike back. On May 1, 1982, a series of anti-government protests brought out thousands of participants, Several dozen thousand in Krakow, Warsaw and Gdansk. On May 3 more protests took place, during celebrations of the Constitution of May 3, 1791. On that day, Communist secret services killed four demonstrators, three in Warsaw and one in Wrocław. Another wave of demonstrations occurred on August 31, 1982, on the second anniversary of the Gdansk Agreement see August 31, 1982 demonstrations in Poland. 
Altogether, on that day six demonstrators were killed, three in Lubin, one in Kiels, one in Wrocław and one in Gdańsk. Another person was killed on the next day, during a demonstration in Czestochowa. Further strikes occurred at Gdańsk and Nauahuta between October 11 and 13. In Nauahuta, a 20-year-old student Bogdan W. Lasik was shot by a Secret Service officer. On November 14, 1982, Walesa was released. However, on December 9 the SB carried out a large anti-solidarity operation, arresting over 10,000 activists. On December 27 Solidarity's assets were transferred by the authorities to a pro-government trade union, the All-Poland Alliance of Trade Unions Ogólnopolski Porozumieni Zwakow Zawadowicz, or OPZZ. Yet Solidarity was far from broken, by early 1983 the underground had over 70,000 members, whose activities included publishing over 500 underground newspapers. In the first half of 1983 street protests were frequent. On May 1, two persons were killed in Krakow and one in Wrocław. Two days later, two additional demonstrators were killed in Warsaw. On July 22, 1983, martial law was lifted, and amnesty was granted to many imprisoned Solidarity members, who were released. On October 5, Walesa was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. The Polish government, however, refused to issue him a passport to travel to Oslo. Walesa's prize was accepted on his behalf by his wife. It later transpired that the SB had prepared bogus documents, accusing Walesa of immoral and illegal activities that had been given to the Nobel Committee in an attempt to derail his nomination. On October 19, 1984, a popular pro solidarity priest, Jerzy Populisko, had died. As the facts emerged, thousands of people declared their solidarity with the deceased priest by attending his funeral, held on November 3, 1984. The government attempted to smooth over the situation by releasing thousands of political prisoners. A year later, however, there followed a new wave of arrests. For Siniak, Lee and Adam Michnik, members of the S. Underground, were arrested on February 13, 1985, placed on a trial, and sentenced to several years' imprisonment for committing several acts of terror against Polish state and its people. Second Solidarity 1988-1989 On March 11, 1985, power in the Soviet Union was assumed by Mikhail Gorbachev. The worsening economic situation in the entire Eastern Bloc, including the Soviet Union, together with other factors, forced Gorbachev to carry out a number of reforms, not only in the field of economics but in the political and social realms glasnost and perestroika. Gorbachev's policies soon caused a corresponding shift in the policies of Soviet satellites, including the People's Republic of Poland. On September 11, 1986, 225 Polish political prisoners were released the last of those connected with Solidarity, and arrested during the previous years. Following amnesty on September 30, Walesa created the first public, legal Solidarity entity since the declaration of martial law. The Temporary Council of NSZZ Solidarnosc Timchasowa Rada NSZZ Solidarnosc with Bogdan Borisevich, Zbigniew Bujak, Vladislaw Frasiniak, Tadeusz Janusz Jedinak, Bogdan Lee, Janusz Palabitsky and Józef Pinyer. Soon afterwards, the new council was admitted to the International Confederation of Free Trade Unions. Many local solidarity chapters now broke their cover throughout Poland, and on October 25, 1987, the National Executive Committee of NSZZ Solidarnosc Krajowa Komisja Wykonacza NSZZ Solidarnosc was created. Nonetheless, solidarity members and activists continued to be persecuted and discriminated, if less so than during the early 1980s. In the late 1980s, a rift between Walesa's faction and a more radical fighting solidarity grew as the former wanted to negotiate with the government, while the latter planned for an anti communist revolution. By 1988, Poland's economy was in worse condition than it had been eight years earlier. International sanctions, combined with the government's unwillingness to introduce reforms, intensified the old problems. Inefficient government-run planned economy enterprises wasted labor and resources, producing substandard goods for which there was little demand. Polish exports were low, both because of the sanctions and because the goods were as unattractive abroad as they were at home. Foreign debt and inflation mounted. There were no funds to modernize factories, and the promised market socialism materialized as a shortage economy characterized by long queues and empty shelves. 
Reforms introduced by Jaruzelski and Mieczysław Rakowski came too little and too late, especially as changes in the Soviet Union had bolstered the public's expectation that change must come, and the Soviets ceased their efforts to prop up Poland's failing regime. In February 1988, the government hiked food prices by 40%. On April 21, a new wave of strikes hit the country. On May 2, workers at the Gdansk shipyard went on strike. That strike was broken by the government between May 5 and 10, but only temporarily. On August 15, a new strike took place at the July Manifesto mine in Yesterzebi Zadroy. By August 20, the strike had spread to many other mines, and on August 22, the Gdansk shipyard joined the strike. Poland's communist government then decided to negotiate. On August 26, Czesław Kizak, the Minister of Internal Affairs, declared on television that the government was willing to negotiate, and five days later he met with Walesa. The strikes ended the following day, and on November 30, during a televised debate between Walesa and Alfred Miodovic, leader of the pro-government trade union, the All Poland Alliance of Trade Unions, Walesa scored a public relations victory. On December 18, a hundred-member citizens' committee, Komite Obywatelski, was formed within Solidarity. It comprised several sections, each responsible for presenting a specific aspect of opposition demands to the government. Walesa and the majority of Solidarity leaders supported negotiation, while a minority wanted an anti-communist revolution. Under Walesa's leadership, Solidarity decided to pursue a peaceful solution, and the pro-violence faction never attained any substantial power, nor did it take any action. On January 27, 1989, in a meeting between Walesa and Kizak, a list was drawn up of members of the main negotiating teams. The conference that began on February 6 would be known as the Polish Round Table Talks. The 56 participants included 20 from S. 6 from OPZZ, 14 from the PZPR, 14 independent authorities, and two priests. The Polish Round Table Talks took place in Warsaw from February 6 to April 4, 1989. The Communists, led by Gen. Jaruzelski, hoped to co-op prominent opposition leaders into the ruling group without making major changes in the structure of political power. Solidarity, while hopeful, did not anticipate major changes. In fact, the talks would radically alter the shape of the Polish government and society. On April 17, 1989, Solidarity was legalized, and its membership soon reached 1.5 million. The Solidarity Citizens Committee Komite Obywatelski, Solidarnosc, was given permission to field candidates in the upcoming elections. Election law allowed Solidarity to put forward candidates for only 35% of the seats in the same, but there were no restrictions in regard to Senat candidates. Agitation and propaganda continued legally up to Election Day. Despite its shortage of resources, Solidarity managed to carry on an electoral campaign. On May 8, the first issue of a new pro-Solidarity newspaper, Gazeta Wyborcza the Election Gazette, was published. Posters of Walesa supporting various candidates, appeared throughout the country. Pre-election public opinion polls had promised victory to the Communists. Thus the total defeat of the PZPR and its satellite parties came as a surprise to all involved. After the first round of elections, it became evident that Solidarity had fared extremely well, capturing 160 of 161 contested same seats, and 92 of 100 Senate seats. After the second round, it had won virtually every seat, all 161 in the same, and 99 in the Senate. These elections, in which anti communist candidates won a striking victory, inaugurated a series of peaceful anti communist revolutions in Central and Eastern Europe that eventually culminated in the fall of communism. The new contract same, named for the agreement that had been reached by the Communist Party and the Solidarity Movement during the Polish Round Table Talks, would be dominated by Solidarity. As agreed beforehand, Wojciech Jaruzelski was elected president. However, the communist candidate for prime minister, Czesław Kizak, who replaced Mieczysław Rakowski, failed to gain enough support to form a government. On June 23, a Solidarity Citizens Parliamentary Club, Obywatelski Club Parliamentarny, Solidarnosc, was formed, led by Bronisław Garimek. It formed a coalition with two ex-satellite parties of the PZPR, United People's Party and Democratic Party, which had now chosen to rebel against the PZPR, which found itself in the minority. On August 24, the same elected Tadeusz Mazowiecki, a Solidarity representative, to be Prime Minister of Poland. 
Not only was he a first non-communist Polish prime minister since 1945, he became the first non-communist prime minister in Eastern Europe for nearly 40 years. In his speech he talked about the thick line Gruba Kreska, which would separate his government from the communist past by the end of August 1989, a solidarity-led coalition government had been formed. Topic: <laughs> Party and Trade Union 1989 to the present. The fall of the communist regime marked a new chapter in the history of Poland and in the history of solidarity. Having defeated the communist government, Solidarity found itself in a role it was much less prepared for—that of a political party—and soon began to lose popularity. Conflicts among Solidarity factions intensified. Walesa was elected Solidarity chairman, but support for him could be seen to be crumbling. One of his main opponents, Wladyslaw Frasiniak, withdrew from elections altogether. In September 1990, Walesa declared that Gazeta Wyborcza had no right to use the Solidarity logo. Later that month, Walesa announced his intent to run for President of Poland. In December 1990, he was elected President. He resigned his Solidarity post and became the first President of Poland ever to be elected by popular vote. Next year, in February 1991, Marian Kurzaklewski was elected the leader of Solidarity. President Walesa's vision and that of the new Solidarity leadership were diverging. Far from supporting Walesa, Solidarity was becoming increasingly critical of the government, and decided to create its own political party for action in the upcoming 1991 parliamentary elections. The 1991 elections were characterized by a large number of competing parties, many claiming the legacy of anti communism, and the Solidarity Party garnered only 5% of the votes. On January 13, 1992, Solidarity declared its first strike against the democratically elected government, a one-hour strike against a proposal to raise energy prices. Another, two-hour strike took place on December 14. On May 19, 1993, Solidarity deputies proposed a no-confidence motion—which passed—against the government of Prime Minister Hanna Sakaka. President Walesa declined to accept the Prime Minister's resignation, and dismissed the Parliament. It was in the ensuing 1993 parliamentary elections that it became evident how much Solidarity's support had eroded in the previous three years. Even though some Solidarity deputies sought to assume a more left-wing stance and to distance themselves from the right-wing government, Solidarity remained identified in the public mind with that government. Hence it suffered from the growing disillusionment of the populace, as the transition from a communist to a capitalist system failed to generate instant wealth and raise Poland's living standards to those in the West, and the government's financial shock therapy. The Balserowicz plan generated much opposition. In the elections, Solidarity received only 4.9% of the votes, 0.1% less than the 5% required in order to enter parliament. Solidarity still had nine senators, two fewer than in the previous Senate. The victorious party was the Democratic Left Alliance, Sojus Luitsi Demokracia or SLD, a post-communist left-wing party. Solidarity now joined forces with its erstwhile enemy, the All Poland Alliance of Trade Unions, OPZZ, and some protests were organized by both trade unions. The following year, Solidarity organized many strikes over the state of the Polish mining industry. In 1995, a demonstration before the Polish parliament was broken up by the police now again known as Policja using batons and water cannons. Nonetheless, Solidarity decided to support Walesa in the 1995 presidential elections. In a second major defeat for the Polish right wing, the elections were won by an SLD candidate, Aleksander Kwasniewski, who received 51.72% of votes. A solidarity call for new elections went unheeded, but the same still managed to pass a resolution condemning the 1981 martial law, despite the SLD voting against. Meanwhile, the left-wing OPZZ trade union had acquired 2.5 million members, twice as many as the contemporary solidarity with 1.3 million. In June 1996, Solidarity Electoral Action was founded as a coalition of over 30 parties, uniting liberal, conservative and Christian democratic forces. As the public became disillusioned with the SLD and its allies, Oz was victorious in the 1997 parliamentary elections. Jerzy Buzek became the new prime minister. 
However, controversies over domestic reforms, Poland's 1999 entry into NATO, and the accession process to the European Union, combined with Oz fights with its political allies, the Freedom Union. Unia Wolnosai and infighting within Oz itself, as well as corruption, eventually resulted in the loss of much public support. Oz leader Marian Kurzaklewski lost the 2000 presidential election, and in the 2001 parliamentary elections Oz failed to elect a single deputy to the parliament. After this debacle, Kurzaklewski was replaced by Janusz Sniadek in 2002, but the union decided to distance itself from politics. In 2006, Solidarity had some 1.5 million members, making it the largest trade union in Poland. Its mission statement declares that Solidarity basing its activities on Christian ethics and Catholic social teachings, works to protect workers' interests and to fulfill their material, social and cultural aspirations. The European Solidarity Centre, a museum and library devoted to the history of Solidarity and other opposition movements of the Eastern Bloc, opened in Gdansk on August 31, 2014. References Further reading Ehringer, Robert Strike for Freedom, The Story of Lech Walesa and Polish Solidarity. Dodd Mead. ISBN 0-396-08065-0. Kenny, Patrick The Burdens of Freedom. Z Books Limited. ISBN 1-84277-662-2. Matinia, Elsbieta Performative Democracy. Paradigm. ISBN 1 billion five hundred ninety four million five hundred sixteen thousand five hundred sixty one OSA Mary Jane 2003 Solidarity and Contention Networks of Polish Opposition University of Minnesota Press ISBN 0 8166 3874 8 Ost David 2005 The Defeat of Solidarity Anger and Politics in Post Communist Europe ebook Cornell University Press. ISBN 0-8014-4318-0. Penn, Shana Solidarity's Secret, The Women Who Defeated Communism in Poland. University of Michigan Press. ISBN 0-472-11385-2. Purdue, William D. Paradox of Change, The Rise and Fall of Solidarity in the New Poland. Prager, Greenwood. ISBN 0-275-95295-9. Pope John Paul II May 19, 2003. Solicitudo re socialize. Libraria Editrice Vaticana. Staniscus, Jadwiga 1984. Poland's Self-Limiting Revolution. Princeton University Press. S. Z. Porer, Michael 2012. Solidarity, The Great Workers' Strike of 1980. Lexington Books. ISBN 0739174886 Topic External links Interview with Henry Kissinger on US Soviet relations during solidarity from the Dean Peter Krog Foreign Affairs Digital Archives Presentation The Solidarity Phenomenon Place N De FR S Ru Solidarity Official English Homepage Solidarity 25th Anniversary Press Center International Conference From Solidarity to Freedom Poland, Solidarity, The Trade Union That Changed the World Who is Anna Walentinovich, a documentary film about solidarity N. De. Advice for East German propagandists on how to deal with the solidarity movement Solidarity, Freedom and Economical Crisis in Poland, 1980-81 Arch Puddington, How American Unions Helps Solidarity Win Michael Bernhard, The Polish Opposition and the Technology of Resistance The Independent Press in Poland, 1976-1990 This site of the Library of Congress contains a list of Polish abbreviations and their English translations, many of which were used in this article in Polish Solidarity Center Foundation, Fundacja Centrum Solidarności. Silver coin marks the 30th anniversary of Poland's Solidarity Movement.